Hey, folks. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of a hack master delve. This is part one. I don't have the capabilities to do the split camera yet, but I will. It'll happen. It just takes time. I'm getting things squared away. I apologize. Uh, dug out, found a classic. Conan shirt the other day. It was buried in a laundry basket that I rarely use clothes out of. Forgot I had this beauty. <laughs> As I've said before, I've mentioned in, I don't know, discords and comments on other folks' shows. Uh, you know, my opinion, uh, Hackmaster, the latest edition, their their fifth ed, even though technically it's the second edition. I'll get into that in another uh, installment. Um, would be, it is, in my opinion, but would have been maybe quite possibly where A, B, and D would be if Watsy didn't get their grubby mitts on it. The license, D&D. &D. And if not, if not, whatever. It's just supposings, wild wonderings. Um, <clears throat> but here's some of the reasons I, I compare and think what they got from AD&D &D and put it in their game, the game, Hackmaster. The books are great. Meaty Tomes, I tabbed it. That's that's all me, and I did this leather bookmarking. But they are they are great, great books. I mean, this is used, so I put some tape to it just to hold her together. I mean, this is, but they are really got the gold foil le faux leather. I mean, the binding is is really good, stitched pages. There might be glare because they're kind of glossy, but. Pages are real nice. Print, great. Ink, great. Well, well worth the value. I mean, I think I think they're still going for like sixty bucks. Might be a little pricey of a buy-in, but man, they're quality. And as far as errata, from what I know, I remember. I mean, you go to the website and look up errata. It's like a page and most of it's like oh we forgot to put a period here or you know very minor very minor errata nothing real game changing this is the player's handbook as you can see we have let me get this stuff so I don't knock over the this is the Game Master's Guide, the DMG. Again, thick, meaty, leather, E. Good stuff. Still quality, still same price. Pages. Art. Good. Pages are... are Good quality. If there's glare, I apologize. Again, I can't see. I haven't set up. It's coming. The uh, split camera, dual camera. There's the DMG. And, and uh, all right, I'm sorry, DMG, we're looking at 368 pages. Let me go back to the pH. Move this stuff here. <clears throat> the pH, we're looking at... Uh, 400 pages. I mean, that's all the way through the index, you know, the very end. Um, there is no pH 2. Here's a Hacklopedia of Beasts, Volume 1. One of the best monster books out there, I think. Again, I taped that because these were well used. Well used. We're looking at 384 pages again same price 60 bucks about 70 with shipping because these are heavy these are meaty they're girthy again 
in the pictures. The thing I like about this monster book, this is bestiary, bestiary. Uh, let's find a There we go. Here's a cockatrice. One thing I like about it, though, you will see on the bottom here, footprints. The region, um, that map is their world setting, Tallinn. The red is usually where they're found. And a size comparison to the, your average human. I kind of like that. There's the general info. You got your activity cycle, habitat, diet, etc. Chance in there. And then yield. Another thing I like they do is, uh, is there any medicinal yield from this creature? Is there any spell components? Um, hide, trophy, uh, treasure. Are they edible? Is there any other possible yield? And then the uh, experience point value. Kind of like that. And they, they have animal, you know, elephant. They got You know, the fantastical to the uh, mundane. Mummy, Raksasha, Sphinx, Tiger, Troll, Vampire. You know, they go through that, which is, is nice. And then this is the uh, second volume of the Hacklepedia of Beasts. Fairly newer, so she's not as beaten. Is the other ones, but still top notch. Same, same print, color, same quality of page, ink, same, same format. You know, here, here's one. Let me find there. There's a hippopotamus. As you can see, the you know. Footprint where they may be in Tallinn, the uh, size comparison. Oops, there we go. And another uh, neat thing about these books, both of them, first and second, there are some characters. And they give you a little background on them. And then they show you a wee teeny, let's see if I can. Point to one. All right, right here. This little symbol right there is the Ravager. That's his little signature. And they all have their own unique. And any encounter that may have happened with these creatures, monsters, animals, etc. I forget what the Ravager's symbol was, but there's an entry, a journal entry, right there, of their encounter, their experience with it. And then instead of signing their name, there's their little, little symbol at the end. And they do that in both books. That's kind of fun. I like it. Uh, I like it. Superb quality. And if you want to talk about clerics <clears throat> and the uh, variety and choice of clerical clerical the, the deities, the churches, they also have on PDF. I don't think they have physical, but you get a PDF. I think three, four bucks an installment. They have a uh, zealot's guide. This is book the first through the ninth. I just printed them out in color, glued them together myself. Walmer's well, glue, but this, that's clerics. And I think there might be one, maybe two more zealot guides coming out to cover all the clerical aspects. Um, every cleric, every faith has its own spell list. 
their own difference, variance of abilities, obviously alignments. They follow the classic alignments of, um, right, cha. Follow the classic alignment, stereo, stereotypical, you know, lawful good, neutral good, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but one of the things that that really struck me when I when I found this hack master, I stumbled upon it. Um, some of the similarities that was carried through yet modified or evolved or or some something. Um, let's see here, right here on page do, 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 38, the first ed AD and D handbook, players handbook, ph. You see the speed factor of a weapon. Hopefully, you can see it. If not, I apologize. Of the different weapons. Speed factor. Now, that most folks didn't use. They ignored it. <clears throat> we, uh, one of the groups, I when I was cutting my teeth on this game, we used it. And it, it seemed to work fairly well. And it actually kept you on the edge of your seat. It mainly came into play when. Um, both parties, both sides, you know, opponent, player, party, had a simultaneous initiative, simultaneous attack. And on page 66 of the DMG, it explains it a little bit more thoroughly, you know, uh, simultaneous initiative. And basically, the, 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 the speed factor of a weapon determined how when you could go, when when you went exactly, who actually got the strike first. Um, and when it boiled down to it, you could also use that uh, speed factor if, let's say, um, a weapon being used by one opponent had a speed factor of 11, and the other opponent, you know, the enemy, uh, had a weapon of a speed factor of Four. Actually, the speed factor four weapon could gain two attacks to one because it was quicker, easier to wield, more efficient. So, <clears throat> that being said, They use that. They put that into play. And also, uh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Uh, the, the second, uh, the segments for spell casters, for the spells, that would also determine if, let's, uh, for example, in A, D, and D, if a spell was six segments to cast and someone had a four segment weapon and they were able to attack that spell caster. Attack lands, spell interrupted. So, <clears throat> these guys, they put that into play, but they put that into play as an overall uh, for their combat, and it's called the count, the count up. Everything is done in seconds. Um, there's no speed factor. There's no... There is, let me find it, dang, it. I'm dusting off this old chestnut. It's been a while since I looked through these books. My apologies. Here we go, gear and equipment. Um, you know, weapons have their, their, their speed. It's a weapon speed. Um, let's see here. Some inserts I put in. A dagger, its weapon speed right out the gate is seven. <clears throat> uh, 
and versus, uh, we'll just say, a great sword. Okay? Its weapon speed is 12. So the dagger, you get to attack every 7 seconds. The great sword is every 12 seconds. Now, someone, how, did, what the heck, that, And spells are done the same way. They have their own amount of seconds to cast. Well, how do you keep track of that? How does that work? Well, there's a nifty little thing I printed out a while back. Put it on a card stock type thing. And I have one for every player of the game at the table. Easy peasy. These are all seconds, 60 seconds, right? In a minute. Um, when the, when the, uh, oops, sorry, here, I gotta mess with this camera real quick. All right, that's better. Okay. You start your initiative. See, this is why I wish I had the two camera thing, and that's going to be a minute. You can get it. You start the count at one. Count two. Count three. Count four. Count five, etc., etc. The, the the ref, the DM, GM, whatever. <clears throat> now initiative is done. Uh, <clears throat> it's not done with a die twenty. It's a D twelve, ten, eight. Six and four, depending. The lower the initiative, better. So if you have a minus to your initiative, an actual authentic written down minus two, that's better because if you rolled an eight on a D10, it's actually a six. So by the time the count reaches six, you're up, pony. You're up. Um, <clears throat> so definitely, the lower the better. <clears throat> So let us say I'm using count six. You were able to attack, able to, you know, and you had the uh, weapon speed of 12. You attack on six. All right. You would have your little marker there. You put your little penny, little meeple, little sorry, whatever, a dice, whatever. Well, you attacked. And you're facing the opponent with the uh, dagger. And they have a weapon speed of 7. So your weapon speed of 12, you move your marker to 18. And that's the next time you can attack. Now let us say they get to attack on 8. 8 plus 7 is what? They get to attack then. And they get to attack here. You gotta wait till here. So there's there's multiple attacks only due to speed of the weapon. Now it seems like a little bit to soak in, but I'm telling you, you, you play it, you do combat with hack, it's very, very hard to go back, in my opinion. I love it. And that carries on so forth and so forth. Now you're not just standing still. Now I don't I can't just um you know I gotta stand there. Let's say the opponent dropped and I have to wait till 18 till I can move again. No, that's just your weapon. Let's say I drop that opponent on the first strike. Well, now I'm considered disengaged, so my weapon count resets. I can move for every second that's count up, I can move five feet. I can sprint right off the gate. In one second, I can move 10 feet. Now, on the on the next second, which would have been two seconds, I can increase my movement up to a full-on run or charge. There's there's rules that, you know, there's numbers, actual numbers. Again, I'm dusting off this chestnut. Most of this is memory. I'll be looking up stuff as we get deeper into this. This game, one of my faves. One, one of the top. It will never 
never leave the shelf. It will never leave my library. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, spell casting is not um, um, Vancean. It is spell point, which I, yeah. So you can amp up a spell by putting more points into it. You can increase the duration, the range, the damage. Uh, either one of those three or all three. Now you do increase the likelihood of a spell failure. And that chart and everything is formulated in the DMG or Game Master's Guide. It's not that complex. Figure it out. Write it down. You're good to go. The DM keeps track of it. You make a roll. Done. It's not, you know, some people, oh, there's a lot to keep track of. There's a lot. Some of this stuff is actually, uh, when you roll to figure out something, depending on the number, it also determines the second thing. So some of these rolls are kind of organic. You know, it's a two-in-one kind of thing, which I like. Again, you don't have to use it all either. Just like any game, you don't have to use it all. Use what's fun to the rest. This is a class-based system. You have the ranger, paladin, knight, fighter, uh, the rogue. You also have the thief. There's two different, two different. I like that. That, that was really, really good. Uh, the mage. And they also do have some, um, uh, ba, ba, ba. we have the fighter mage, the fighter thief, the mage thief, those three dual classes, multi-class. Uh, we have, now again, the clergy, the clerics. Wow, you, you want to talk about a bevy of gods and the different clerical aspects. This, this will definitely be an entire, uh, uh, I, I guess you could say, chapter of this covering of, of Hackmaster. I mean, it will, it's, it's, there are, I'm trying to find it and look it up. Oh yo yo! There's so many of these deities. I have the list here. Okay, so many churches. Let's see. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Different churches, different uh, of, of different deities. They all have their alignment, their priesthood, um, their spheres of influence, the holy days, the symbol, and the actual name of the deity, and each and every one of these has their own clerical spell list. Whammo! Mm. Really, really good. They they go in. I mean, not super in depth, but they they get in there. They get in there. We have our Temple of Strife, the Creator of Strife. This one is a chaotic evil. Spheres of influence, discord, foul weather, misfortune. Tenants of the faith, priests and other followers of the creator of strife, also known as ill luck, discordant one, he who brings misfortune, maker of dissension and bringer of the drought or flood, rain, snow, heat, cold, etc. Travel about the lands, bringing misfortune wherever they roam. Members of the temple of strife seek to disrupt Harmony and plunge the world into a vortex of chaos. They exist in small numbers in all nations as they seem to prefer deserts and wastelands. And uh, again, the, uh, the alignment is chaotic evil. They have a uh, divine icon. Um, a spatially impossible geometric shape atop a crooked stick. The existence of this shape is a miracle granted by the creator of strife. 
Their preferred weapon is a flail. Uh, other weapons permitted by the clergy, any. Armor permitted, any, but painted in clashing discordant colors. Um, bonuses. Um, now, that they have skills in this. This percentile for the skills. Um, bonuses they would gain to their skills. Cartography, survival skills, heavy armor, and shield proficiencies. Um, their power, one of the powers uh, outside of spellcasting. Um, luck points, because thieves and rogues do get luck points. Um, the luck points are ineffective if used against a minion of misfortune. <laughs> then they have the raiment, deity's appearance, advancement with the new order. They have confederate faiths. A list. They have an a, a list of adversarial faiths. I mean, that's that's good for food for you know thought for the DM for the player for the table. <clears throat> I mean, the artwork in the book is, is snazzy. Sorry about the glare. Again, I got to get lighting. Plus, these pages are glossy. They are glossy page. They, they are a bit shiny. Uh, another great thing about this game that I really liked, it really caught me, was... The ability scores, they're, they're, they're the classic strength, whiz, con, charisma, you know, intelligence, dex. They, they did include looks. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we've all known or met the, the fella that wasn't that special looking, but he just seemed to be able to talk them ladies into, well, you know, um, <clears throat> charisma and looks. And they do affect each other to a point. And the guy was no Quasimodo and didn't have a billion dollars. I mean, he, average fella, wasn't the best looking, though. But wow, did he get the women folk. And they were fairly good looking women folk. Some of them are. Anyways, the uh, ability scores, what they do, there's they do more than one thing. Most of them do more than one thing. Strength. You get your damage modifier, your feet of strength, which would be uh, bend bars, lift gates, that type of thing. <clears throat> then you have your lifting weight. Well, that's, that, that really isn't doing anything. That's just your standard. What you can lift, what you can carry no encumbrance, carry light encumbrance, carry medium encumbrance, carry heavy encumbrance, and your drag <clears throat> and pounds. <clears throat> wisdom. Uh, you get an attack modifier for wisdom. Huh, imagine that. And a build point bonus. Yes, there are build points for these characters. You do roll them up, but you gain build points to invest into your skills. And your attributes, <clears throat> which we'll get into that. Um, now, for intelligence, the build point bonus would be any intelligence-based related skill. You can put those points into. They're not from your general pool of build points upon character creation. Wisdom, initiative modifier. Hmm. Build point bonus, again, wisdom skills only. Defense modifier, huh. And then your mental saving throw modifier. Yeah, I never, I was, I play it, I use it, but I was never keen on your strength being like, I can hit you better because I'm stronger, even though you're smarter. Never, never liked that. To a point, I can kind of get it because, you, you know, you have the strength. You can rock. But to be able to hurt me more, yes, because you have brute strength. But if you're a mongoloid, you know, an idiot. Uh, they fix that here. Dexterity, you have your initiative modifier, an attack modifier, a defense modifier, 
your dodge saving throw modifier, and your feat of agility. Constitution, you get a physical saving throw modifier. Looks, there is a charisma modifier, a starting honor modifier, and a starting fame modifier. Yes, there is honor and fame in this game. Charisma, a build point bonus for charisma-based skills. Starting honor, turning modifier, turning, you know, evil, undead. Morale modifier. And your maximum amount of protege. Proteges. Um, henchmen in AD and D. Proteges you can have. You can get it. You can begin to attract or gain at a certain level. And you they don't even have to be necessarily adventuring with you. You you have to have some form of contact with them fairly steady. And you can't actually take half of your XP. No more than half you've earned in any single adventure scenario and give it to the protege because you are teaching them how to be better and they kind of level up behind you yet with you they can <clears throat> they're um, the races you have your dwarf your elf your gnome your gnome titan those guys are neat they're still small gnomes but they're, they're just a, more of a warrior society of, of gnome. Uh, Half-elf, elven-reared, or half-elf human-reared. There's a different... There's a difference. Um, Half-hobgoblin, half-orc, half-ling, and human. And you do have ability score modifiers by race. Um, you know, a dwarf gets a plus four to their con, minus two to looks, minus two to charisma. For an example, you know, uh, uh, the advice and the, 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 the breakdown of, of the character races It's great. They they cover they cover everything you know everything you need right there. You got your pros and your cons. <clears throat> you get your ability adjustments. You 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 know um, there's cost to to enter into a class. Again, you start off with build points, and you have to buy into a class. You can't just I'm a orbit. So it's a game of tough choices right out the rip. My kind of game. Um, <clears throat> and the the great thing, the really fun thing, they do keep they do have a little levity left over from the uh, fourth edition. The fourth edition was a joke joke game, really. It, it, Hackmaster, any edition is no freaking joke. But, the, you know, they at, at the end of each racial write-up, they have advice on playing. And I'll read you. I'm right at the dwarf. I'll read this. Advice on playing a dwarf. Look, you're short. Your arms and legs are stubby. You ain't nothing special to look at. If you take guff from people about your deficiencies, they may overlook your strong points. You're tough. Hard to move and stubborn. Don't let them turn you into a laughing stock like that modern Peter Jackson did to your cousin Gimli. If someone gives you crap, get grumpy, then angry. Don't just take their ribbing or laugh it off. Make it known you ain't happy. Get in their face or chest. Get up close with your mass and let them think about how you're built like a tank. And then remind them, you may not be there to plug that hole in the watch. Uh, pl plug the hole in the line or watch their back when enemies inevitably attack. There's a reason you're dour and tack turn. If they hint at poking fun, especially them freaking waif elves, 
get up in their cage and let them smell your stink while you squint up at them gunslinger style. And if that don't work, piss in their canteen while you're on watch. <laughs> it's great. It's fun. It's fun. They have that advice for every every race. Um, yeah, the grill. The Sar Sarlangans. I don't know if that was on that list that I read earlier, but grill. Grill are kind of like a, uh, a, a wild elf. That just can't seem to be wiped out. All the races, just about all the races, all, all throughout time kept trying to snuff them out, exterminate, genocide, and they just won't go away. Um, this goes levels 1 through 20. All of the classes. Uh, what I really also like about this, what they did, um, the fighter... Okay, if it, there's the fighter, the knight, and the paladin. You're a fighter first for five levels. If you meet the requirements and do what you, you need to do, then you can become a knight. And you can go on knight till 20th level. Or for five more levels, you do what you need to do, and then you can be a paladin. Paladinhood is earned, not just. First level paladin, yay. Ranger, I like they did Ranger. Uh, they don't cast spells. Got a barbarian in here. You have the thief. You have the rogue. You have the assassin. The mage. And then fighter mage, you know, the split classes. Cleric, I mean, you know, and now the cleric, there's there's a, a a faith that you're a druid, flat out druid. There's a faith that you're a flat out uh, monk. Uh, Temple of Three Strengths, I believe. You're, you're basically a monk that has some, you know, clerical spells. But um, I don't know if nine covers them all or not. The nine of these zealots. Guides. Nine might cover them all. There might maybe need to be more. I, I haven't checked off. Zealot's guide nine. Let's see. One, two. Yeah, I think there might that they might have summed it up with with all nine. There are there are a good chunk, starting chunk, handful in here covered in in a bit of detail. You know, the vengeful one. The Order of Agony, you know, and there's the Face of the Free, Chaotic Good. There's, you know, Temple of the Patient Arrow. There's, you know, the good guys, too. I just read a, a evil one. Yeah, the convent, the Conventicle of the Great Tree, Alignment Neutral, Spheres of Influence, Nature. Pretty much Druid. Yeah, because you can, um, yeah, Brotherhood of the Bear, Animal Form, Power. That That's also another term for the faith brotherhood of the bear uh, at seventh level you can get turned into a tiny animal uh by the time you hit 20th level you can turn into a grizzly bear and you might think ah that ain't a grizzly bear really what the heck no i'm telling you um right now a grizzly bear in this game you're gonna die heck i'll look it up real quick let me see here E-A-R, bear, grizzly, bear, grizzly, hmm. grizzly bear, 41 plus 8d8 hit points. Their speed, their attack speed, all animals have an attack speed, they have a combat. I think the people at Hack call it the combat rose, I call it the combat MSDS. <laughs> it's neat how they sum it up. But yeah, Grizzly Bear, four seconds. Every four seconds, it gets a swipe at you. It has a plus 16 to hit. Um, when you have defense, when someone attacks you, you actually roll defense. 
it's just not a static number like an AC number. Uh, so there, uh, Grizzly Bear's defense is plus six. Now, armor in this game is damage reduction. Uh, Grizzly Bear's damage reduction is 13. Its damage is 2d8 P plus 9. Now, P is penetrating. That's like exploding every, well, not every, but majority of, of dice that are rolled in this game with damage and such. Um, they are penetrating. They're exploding. They carry over. So if you roll an 8, you get to roll on an 8-sided die. So if you roll an 8 on a D8, you get to roll that D8 again. You you subtract one from that roll, so zero is possible, and you add it to your previous roll. Now, if you roll an eight again, you still get to, and you just subtract one again. That doesn't. Um, the reach is medium. They're top. There's a threshold of pain in here, so it depends on the amount of damage that you receive. You may do what we call end up. The enemy or your character may end up in a um, situation I like to uh, call um, the Pete Griffin, the Peter Griffin. I don't know if you've seen where he hits his shin and he's, uh, uh, for quite a while. That's kind of what you do. You're winded. You're, you're knocked. You're kind of, whoa, oh, your bell's rung. And depending on the failure of the save, the difference to the number depends on how many seconds your bell is rung. So that can put you in a, in a very, very precarious position in combat so you gotta you you and the rest of your party you gotta get along you gotta have people watching each other's back big time this ain't no joke ain't no joke the movement for a grizzly bear crawl 10 foot walk 15 foot jog 20 foot run 25 foot sprint 30 foot so it can start off walking at 15 foot per second in 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 the first second they can go from a walk to a jog from a jog to a run from a run to a sprint so they they so in a matter of one two three four seconds i believe maybe five tops they could move Like 80, 90 feet, if they wanted to. I mean, characters can pretty much do the same, if need be. Because in between, again, the the attack, the... Um, let me put this back in here, wherever it goes, real quick. Uh, oh, and they did share the license with TSR for a while, and Wizards. Um, the sorry, in between your attacks, like I said before, if, if a foe was downed on, on your count when you attack and they're done, down, dead, you don't have to wait your weapon speed to move or engage at the table, you, you can move you know as the count is going up you can use do your movement until you can engage in another opponent now the moment you engage in another opponent let's say for instance i down them like i was saying before i, I down them on um what was that count six so I, I attack i attacked on count six i down them count seven i can start moving away and let's say I get to another opponent on count 10. I roll my attack, successful or not. I don't get to go until count 22 because it's a 12-second speed as long as I'm engaged with that opponent. And whatever weapon speed they have, they go. So it, it's kind of a dance at the table. You, you kind of want to, uh, you definitely want to pay attention. To the table and what's going on. Um, yeah, it's not. Again, once you soak it in, it it's really isn't that that hard. There's there's some really good, really really good points to this. 
Um, I'm kind of sputtering here. Magic items and such you don't create in the traditional way where you put spell points or spell energy into a magical weapon. It's pretty much through um, you either find them. Good luck buying them, but if you can, you buy them. Um, or you actually um, inadvertently make them. Let us say you had a sword. Oh, oh, oh boy, the criticals and the fumbles in this thing are amazing as well. You can crit and fumble while talk about charts. You actually roll a D10,000 to figure it out. What? Um, you inadvertently create magic items. Let's say you had a shield. Uh, you, you know, you're a dwarf. Human, whatever. You have a shield. You've always taken care of it. It has not been splintered and shattered and broken, which can and does in combat. But for some reason, you're, you've just been lucky and you've kept it for three levels, five levels, whatever the DM may consider fair. Um, it may become a plus one shield or two or something. It may have a name of its own let's say the player character does name him itself just because it's so lucky and he's like you know this is uh you know grumble belly's defender shield man the shield's been through a lot we then the magic begins then it starts to build from there i like that that that's that's really neat um yeah, as far as potions and such, from what I recall, you, you don't make those either. I don't think. Uh, I, I, again, I'm dusting off this chestnut. I'll be going through more and more and reading through more and more and re reminding, remembering, brushing up more and more. Um, about this i just been reminded of it uh, I, I miss it it's in my opinion for me it's one of the all-time greats period it just it is it covers so much you, you can do i mean you want tactics you got it there's there's different maneuvers you, you can do in combat it's just not rolled to, to hit you yeah, i mean uh, uh, Weapons that can jab actually have a jab speed. It's quicker on the count, yet the damage is less. Hello. Um, you, you, you have now, you know, again, I, I made a comment on one of the channels, one of the YouTubes who's talking back and forth. Me and a, a fella um, was commenting back and forth about Hackness. I said, it all depends on the character. She says, oh, there's so much to keep track of. There's a, so much. Well, if you have the right character sheet like this, you have your aggressive attack. You you just fill it out. It's done. Yeah, I know. Who wants to do all that? Well, if you don't want to do it, don't play the game. It's no harm, no foul. It's your, it's your jam. It's how you want to, you know, full parry, give ground, hold at bay. All the numbers you would need to know for your character. Spend the time. Calculate. You'll be all right. Figure it out. And then you're done. And then you just get on the jam. You're done. Again, skills are percentile. There's a good bevy of skills. Good list. Some are um, anybody can try. Anybody can attempt. And some you need to be trained in. Um, which you know, makes sense. Your skills are determined. You, I believe, yeah. You you add their their attribute base, obviously, and and they all have two attributes. I think. Yeah, they're they're two attributes based, and you. Whichever of the two attributes is the lowest, the 
So let's say I had a 15 in con and an 11 in strength, and it was a strength and con based skill. I would use my strength as the starting percentage of that skill. So it would be 11%. Your chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Now you can put build points into these skills and, um, you know, beef them up, up the percentage fairly decent fairly decently even right out the gate um another thing i like they took from they had to have from unearthed arcana the cavalier class how some of their attributes are able to be um bettered through level leveling every attribute but looks in this game you roll your 3d6 and then you roll a percentile that percentile okay i'll give a quick example here I'm, my, my my rose dice came in oh my set of roses they seem to roll fairly fairly well fairly balanced man these are buttes all right but we'll, we'll just say 3d6 I got it. All right. I'll take you at 15 at 61%. That percentile means I am 61% closer to having this 15 be a 16. When you level up, you get a certain amount of build points. You can invest that into that percentile roll and bump it up. And you also get a D20, D12, D10, D8, D6, D4. Okay. You can, I can roll that D20 and put it in that attribute. We'll call it strength. What the heck? I rolled an eight. So now I am at 69%. Plus, I can put the build points into that and even raise it up even more. Once you get to the 01, I would be a 17. Or 16. 1601. It's got to flip. It's got to go over the 100 mark. That's just the way it is. Attack, baby. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for now, I'm going to call it. I appreciate you guys watching. Comment, please. Questions, thoughts. Uh, this is just the first installment. I'm going to get more in depth. I'm going to, I'm going to, Double check on the histories of when this game came about, how it came about. Um, it was, uh, some of us know that are watching this, uh, came about through um, Knights of the Dinner Table. It was a comic strip by Jolly Blackburn. Um, and that's why a lot of people think it's a joke game. Uh, the fourth edition was very lighthearted and, excuse me, comedic. Which, hey, they that was kind of a tactical move on on the creator's part. But if you get through all the <laughs> in that game itself, now I've never played or ran it, but I do own it. And I've, re I've read it fairly well. That game is no joke either. It's different than this 5e. You, it's not a compatible, but it ain't no joke. It really is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, ho I hope you folks enjoy this. Again, comment, question, uh, uh, like, subscribe, all that happy jazz. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you in part two. Appreciate it.